what causes insomnia? Anxiety or does insomnia cause anxiety? So I'm going to go over like what has worked for me to fix anxiety caused insomnia caused by anxiety. But when we're speaking about if anxiety is causing insomnia or does insomnia cause anxiety, it's kind of the chicken and the egg thing. First of all, what I'm going to preface off is I, I just want to say that I have documents on my PC in which that's what I'm going to be kind of looking like when I look at this like this in the camera. Just so you know, I can always look at the camera. So I'm going to be here looking at the chart, not the chart, but the overall, the, the things that I have, like the notes. And it's like I said, I'll, like chicken and the, and the egg thing. Um, if you have anxiety, you know, obviously anxiety can trigger insomnia and how like, and this is like what I'm going to go over, like a person that I help with. Uh, but pretty much when you have insomnia that's caused by anxiety, this probably is driven by you trying to problem solve and try and do all these rituals and trying to obsess over sleep. That's, I mean, just for context, I've had insomnia for three years and there was like chronic insomnia. You know, I've watched like hundreds of videos, I've read books. I've bought courses on sleep, you know, so I've been and tried these things because I had it for three years and I wanted to always like problem solve and stuff like that. But try and control sleep is not what worked, never worked for me. Like, honestly speaking, it never did. And I really started asking myself, like, is there something wrong with me? Like, why the hell am I not sleeping and all these people? Why is everyone normal, but not me? Like, that was the main things that I was asking myself. But it gets better, bro. Like it just like letting, just letting go, like letting go of the performance pressure. There's no need to try and force sleep happen, you know? So, uh, like I said, insomnia can be triggered by anxiety. Like I said, you're trying to change your behaviors around sleep. Just think of, were you doing all these things when you were sleeping good? Probably not, you know, probably not. Probably you were just chilling, you know, just going to sleep, not caring about sleep, but also if you have insomnia, you're like 20 times more likely to get anxiety, you know, and there was, there was a study done on this. So it's like 18 to 20 times more likely to get, to get anxiety. And when you have insomnia, you know, to develop anxiety. So what worked for me, just like, just think of this whole thing. Like you just putting a necessary pressure, pressure on yourself pretty much. Uh, it's performance anxiety. You're trying to control sleep, which will never work. Honestly speaking, never worked for me. And probably if you're trying, like you try and maybe a few nights, you've had like a few nights, bad, bad of sleep. You try to force sleep. Did it work? Honestly, did, did it work? Honestly, maybe it did, maybe it not, but controlling sleep will never work because it's an outcome. What you can control is the inputs and what you do. So, what I'm trying to say here is that the more you try and make sleep happen, the more you will just put a necessary pressure on yourself. It's like uh, you're trying to run 20 kilometers marathon every single night just to prove that you can run. You know, that's why that's the, the unnecessary pressure that you're putting yourself through just to make sleep happen. It just happens normally for sleep to happen. You need to be sleepy enough and you're not, you, you should not be aroused, you know low low arousal because even like at some point even if you're like super aroused and then you know you, you're just um super sleep deprived sleep is always going to happen in the end sleep is just sleep pressure will, will always win it's like it's even if you have not slept for like three four nights you like if you hit like sometimes the pillow even if you don't want to sleep and you have a lot of anxiety sleep will still happen it will knock you out you know it will sleep will always win in the end like a long long run but um, just trying to fight it with like, why am I thinking this? Like the insomnia is this big word, you know, you're just trying to get rid of it and avoid it is what makes the problem even worse, you know? So um, what we're describing here is also something called ironic process theory. It's a, it's a psychological process that a, like where a person deliberately tries and to surpass or avoid certain thoughts then that renders those thoughts as something more persistent you know like simple example think of don't think of a pink elephant don't think of yourself trying to fall asleep tonight if you had still insomnia problems you know 
you still just keep thinking about it. So what does that mean? It pretty much means the more you try and do and the more focus you put on something, the more it just becomes more persistent in your mind. So what's what's the answer here? It just pretty much even if you're even if you think bro about sleep or maybe you're a girl, but even if you think about sleep and you try and make this thing happen, like this is not how normal sleepers sleep. Like honestly speaking, the moment I started sleeping good was when I like threw away all these kiwi fruits, like these 15 step routines that honestly never worked. Like it never worked for me. And yeah, like just coming home with the fact that coming okay with the wakefulness at night is the is the answer here there is nothing wrong with you you can sleep normal it's just you being stuck you know it's just you in this situation where it's not it's not your fault that you're in this situation it's just your mind trying to problem solve it's just part of your mind that's problem solving everything and just quick little tips that helped me were which I have a lot of more videos on the channel, understanding the sleep cycles, which I have a video on, but also setting a sleep window. Or if you're trying to start here, just start with a like six hour sleep window. That that could work. Um, not, not that it could not work. Obviously it could, but six hour sleep window. Also what I do if I was in your situation is also like stop obsessing over the, like the rituals. Just go to bed when you're sleepy and set a wake up time every single day for like two weeks i mean not for two weeks like for for forever i mean it's not forever but for a long time like let's say you want to wake up at 7 10 6 a.m six hour back from that that's when you only give yourself an opportunity this is like 6 a.m like when you want to wake up you go to bed when it's 12 a.m you know and if you're not sleepy you don't go to bed simple as that uh but you only give yourself an opportunity to sleep in that window and only when you give yourself an opportunity to sleep in that window is when you're you're gonna start to reset your circadian rhythm and also like first thing when you wake up please have sun in your eyes it's gonna reset your dopamine receptors and your circadian rhythm is gonna be intact even at some point like right now i don't even wake up with an alarm you know i get sleep at the same time i pretty much wake up around 7 7 to 8 a.m and i go to bed like when i'm sleepy like and that happens around 12 12 a.m like 12 12 30 ish i remember around that and that's it i mean it's obviously not that like the end of the deal but just having that mindset shift that you're obsessing over the fact that you're trying to make sleep happen it's not gonna work please i mean i've been there been there for three years never worked for me so